Well, we talked about Ryzen 7 when they announced that, and they kind of compared it to the i7s, and it looked pretty good overall. The price was much lower, the performance was comparable, especially now that more benchmarks have come out for it. We've seen that Intel's i7s tend to be a little better for gaming, but the workflow actually works better with Ryzen 7, and that's actually a great thing, because if you're a content creator or you do heavy workloads on your computer, you would probably buy a Ryzen 7 or a high-end i7 because that's what you're doing, not necessarily just for games. Well, now AMD has come out, this was yesterday, and they told us all about the Ryzen 5 CPU line. And I was talking about that video, how this is going to be the more interesting line of CPUs because it is probably going to be more gaming focused overall. And it's going to compete directly with the i5 series from Intel, which would be like the 7600K. And overall, after seeing it, yes, that is exactly what it looks like. So in their video, they put this up on YouTube. They It was kind of like an in interview style. Where they were talking about the different stuff and then introducing the lines to us. There's, there's four different Ryzen 5 CPU types. We have, and they're all different models, we have the 1400, 1500X, the 1600, and the 1600X, and they all vary in terms of like thread and core counts and then different frequencies. So real quick, let's go through this. We have the lowest end, which would be the 1400 at four cores or eight threads. That would be that essentially they would have uh, like multi-threading, almost like, think of like how Intel has their hyper-threading kind of technology where one core can essentially act as two. That's what we have here. So you do get multiple threads out of one core. So we have four core with eight threads at 3.2 or 3.4 gigahertz with its, with its boosting technology that they have where it'll boost up depending on what you're doing and if the thermals are good. From there, we go up to four cores or eight threads with 3.5 gigahertz or 3.7 gigahertz. That's with the 1500X. Up from there, six cores with 12 threads at 3.2 or 3.6 gigahertz. That's the 1600. Then it tops off at the 1600X, six cores, 12 threads, 3.6 or four gigahertz. Now, of course, the biggest question on everyone's mind here is the pricing because that's what really set Ryzen 7 apart from the i7s is that the pricing was so low. I mean, the top one was half the price of Intel's top performing i7. In this case, these are going to be slightly closer to the i5s, but remember, these are offering more features in terms of higher thread counts, for example. So the Ryzen 5 line starts at $169. That's with the Ryzen 5 1400. The 1500X goes for 189, 1600 at 219, 1600X at 249. It would be the top value in that line. So here's a, these are charts from Enantech. They do some pretty good work over there, but they went ahead and made charts to help uh, compare these. And very quickly, you'll see here, we do have them across the board. To the right, you'll see the TDP, which is how much power it pulls essentially. The, the most expensive one at 1600X does top at 95 watts, which might be a little high, but I mean, keep in mind it is a six core 12 thread with a pretty high base and turbo clock. But right below that, the 1600 comes in at 65 watts, which is actually a pretty good amount of power to be pulled through. That's actually very low. And I think I'd prefer that one overall. Keep in mind, the top one appears to not come with a cooler out of the box either. The bottom three come with Spire, Spire, and then Stealth. The Spires being much taller, for example. The Stealth kind of being a shorter one, as you'll see here with the different Wraith coolers. It's nice that they come with coolers, but if you're like me, that cooler barely uh, comes out of the box because you usually put a better aftermarket cooler on there. And this is where it gets interesting because all of the Ryzen 5 CPUs are unlocked, which means you can play around with the frequency multipliers. You can do all kinds of stuff if you want to overclock it. So this is great for enthusiasts. If you want to try to squeeze a little more out of it, you can, as long as you have the cooling. That's the big thing. Make sure it is cool enough and then you can start squeezing more power out of it right away. I like that it's completely unlocked. That just adds more value to the CPUs themselves. It's great. Of course, the memory support line is pretty much as you'd expect, DDR4 across the board, leading all the way up to 2667 on the frequency of the RAM. Now I wanna shoot down from there because the biggest question is gonna be how will it perform against the i5? Well, we don't know yet. Now in that video, they showed us some uh, very in-house benchmarks or tests because it's what they can control. That makes sense. Usually when the stuff gets out to reviewers, they put it through all kinds of interesting scenarios that may not benefit the Ryzen 5 line as much as they want it to. So for example, in the video you see here, they tested it with Blender, where they are creating like a Ryzen symbol, as you can see it kind of going around. And this benefits from more cores, more threads being available. And the i5s generally have four, whereas if it's testing it against the 1600X, that has 12 threads. So that's gonna power through stuff that uses multiple threads. Whereas an i5 may be better at something as single thread applications, maybe with games. But after that, they find that, for example, the 
Ryzen 5 1600X finishes that image right around 30 seconds. The i5 takes a little under 52 seconds. So yes, if you are a content creator, the Ryzen 5 line looks better to have right now than the i5s simply because of thread and core count. Now they do jump from there over to Overwatch, just kind of show a game I guess a lot of people play in esports competitions, even stuff like that, where you want a very high frame rate because you might have something like 120 hertz monitor like they're showing here, and they want to try to keep 120 frames across the board. Well, the one they have with Ryzen is having no problem with that. The Intel one is right around there too. So what they're trying to show, I guess, is Ryzen is the best choice at this point for workloads, whether you're rendering videos, or if you want to jump over to games, it will perform at least the same as the i5 line. Here's another chart as a comparison one, again, from Nantech, great website for this. They show us the i the Ryzen 5 1600X gets the i5 7600K. That is what it's going to be compared to, let's be honest. I mean, it's going to be the top of each side there. And right away, you'll see the cores and thread counts are much different. That's why Blender finished way faster on the 1600X. You have more threads in line to do work. It's going to get workloads done faster. That's just the way it is. Down from there, you'll see the frequency count is higher on the i5 side. I do think the i5 will probably retain its single thread performance performance advantage over AMD here, but certainly not the multi-thread advantage. The next difference in the chart, obviously, is the L3 cache. Cache is interesting. It does help the CPU, and it would really be needed for something that has that many threads with the 1600X. The reason the i5 does not need that much, more than likely, is because it only has four cores, and it's not even multi-threaded anyway, so it would not benefit much more from having higher count. That 16 megs of L3 cache is going to help those threads because cache can be filled with stuff that the CPU can kind of predict that it will need next. Like if it's rendering a video, it can predict that this frame is going to be next after these two threads finish, and it can store it in much faster L3 cache rather than pull it from DDR4 RAM. It's Cache has always been very important for different CPUs in the past, and because we're getting to the point where we're having 12 threads, L3 cache is very important because it's it's going to help power those with faster ways to access information. And finally, the price. Now, the TDP is very similar, 91 to 95. Even if you drop down to the 1600, all of a sudden it's 65 versus 91 watts. I'd still be interested to see how the 1600 does in terms of workload against the 7600K, but we have the price where it is a difference of about $7, and you'd get on one side something you could use for a lot of things like rendering, whereas the i5 may struggle more with rendering and it would just be better with games, or at least even at this point based on their examples. So overall, the Ryzen 5 line looks interesting. It really does. I think the one to me that looks the most interesting is the uh, is the Ryzen 1600, the Ryzen 5 1600. It's a good price at around 219. At least that's what it's going to retail for. For some reason, retailers always mark it up or eBay scalpers. It, it happens. Anyway, uh, that's not a bad price. I think it's great for an all-around CPU. If you look at it that way, it's something you can use as a content creation CPU, but you can also play games on it without sacrificing much at all. So I look forward to this. I think I am going to go with a Ryzen Vega setup when I do build a computer inevitably on this channel with all new parts. So I look forward to that Ryzen 5, a Vega GPU whenever we see them. But overall, be happy about Ryzen 5 because if nothing else, Intel now has to look at their thread count with their i5 series even. So I'll be interested when reviewers get these in their hands. It's coming out April 11th. Look for reviews from some of the bigger channels then. And I think it's gonna be really, really interesting going forward. Hopefully it does well. It, I want Intel to start really pushing their i5 and their i7 line much more, and I want to see prices start to come down across the board, which, if Ryzen is successful, it will. Let me know what you guys think, though. I'm very curious. I will see you next time.